Hello, listener. Just wanted to give you a quick content warning. This episode deals with genocide and unethical experimentation and is a Nazi allegory. So if any of those things is going to make this difficult to listen to for you, know that now. Who are you? Deathwalker? So they called him. Blast him and that infernal female! Not like us. You will become us. A herring is just a herring, but a good cigar is a Cuban. We will meet at the hour of scampering. Hello, and welcome to Who Are You? It's a really real Babylon 5 watch cast that is definitely not three podcasts stacked on top of each other wearing a trench coat. I'm Laura. No, it's I'm the- Jafar. And guess and what? it's a real podcast. We're live today. We did it. We did it. We're a real podcast. We launched. We did the thing. You're like, yeah, this is episode 10, 11. You guys launched forever ago. And I'm like, no, no, no we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded forever ago. I think we recorded episode one back in May. Uh huh. May. And or, yeah. Or June. May or June. And we didn't record every week, but we we're pretty good about it for a while. It is currently November as mm-hmm. we're recording this. This episode will go out. Oh, God, we can figure that out now. Oh, man. Um, it's going to be after Christmas, right? I'm not even sure. Time is an illusion. This is either going to go out January 5th or 12th. Awesome. Which means we need to, that calendar we made of cast member birthdays and stuff, we need to actually start paying attention to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are some in January, if I remember correctly. So, Well, happy birthday to anyone that we missed already. It's your birthday today. Woo-hoo! It was so exciting. Okay, I, I said we were live today, but we were actually live a couple of days ago. Yeah. Um, but it was an exciting day that we made that happen yeah yeah it's a blast it's um like it was very exciting everything going on and like getting everything to work and obviously this was like there may be like five people listening who are aware of this but for the little bit only episode two was showing up on the rss feed it was a whole thing i had to go back and like delete episodes one and two and add them back in and everything and but yeah all that is over and done with now uh yeah and we're it's here a real feed It's a real feed with a real podcast with real episodes scheduled to actually post that theoretically uh, some people will listen to. (laughs) Yeah. And life had kind of taken a big old steamy dump on me about midway through October, early to Mm mid-October. And so it's been about three weeks since you and I have even seen each other. And so like when I put together our little podcast art and just sent it over and you were like oh we can go live now and i was like what <laughs> it's all we needed yeah oh okay well then do it and the next yeah. morning it was up and and i was like oh this you know this last month has been a big old pile of shit that i've just been shoveling myself out from under and i was mm-hmm. like oh i think i think i see the top of the pile like that's yeah. how i felt when i saw our little podcast good so, and i'm glad that that could help yeah. everything it did um, good i won't talk about my two weeks in hawaii yeah i mean <laughs> while you were, I looked you, at the while pictures. You were shoveling shit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was happy for you <laughs> oh, i appreciate that yeah i had a great time it's beautiful um, yeah you've shoveled your own shit you deserve some hawaii lord knows that's true that was a good time i greatly enjoyed all of the stops on my vacation catching up with some old friends in san diego heading out to Hawaii with my buddy while he still lives out there. Because by the time this airs, he might not. Oh, gosh. (laughs) One of the reasons why I was like, I'm going now. I managed to do a week in Hawaii for under $1,500, including flights and everything. Like, Right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, you get that opportunity, you take it. Mm -hmm. You find a way to make it work. Yeah. And I did. And I'm glad I did. And who knows when I'll be able to go back. But it was awesome. Yeah, it looked beautiful. Yeah, I was following was, those pictures. For sure. Yeah, it was gorgeous. I don't yeah. want to be like that person who like goes a place and then comes back and is all like, I'm writing a book. Um, <laughs> but I might write a book. 
not even really about Hawaii, to be clear. Right. But like scenic photography and like Vista photography is a hobby of mine. Oh, it fun. has been for a decade. I've traveled extensively in the United States. Um, now with Hawaii and a couple other stops, I think I've been in like 40 states, maybe 41 states. Nice. So I've traveled a ton for work over the years and I have stopped at a lot of places and taken a lot of very nice pictures. So I was thinking more maybe like a coffee table thing. Yeah. That's like just mostly photography, maybe a couple stories, maybe some words here and there, not really like writing a book. Right. And definitely not about my transformative experience as a white man going to a foreign place. <laughs> not what I'm doing here. For sure, I'll end up talking about it more. And I'm not looking to sell the book or anything. It'd probably be one of those like print on demand things where when someone yeah. orders the book, they make a copy and send it off. Uh-huh. If you need uh, some good Oklahoma Vistas, I can hook you up. <laughs> Julie noted. Do you have vistas in Oklahoma? We have some interesting views, yes. <laughs> okay. I haven't been in Oklahoma. It's one of the few states, so. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> but we have some, some good shots that you can get. We have, like, if you think about it, several different, I want to say biomes. That's, that's just in my head because of Minecraft, but, <laughs> like, different zones if that makes sense yeah you know what i'm trying to say yeah this the state's borders were not written around topography yeah you know, they were and, and the environment the and the ecology. Yeah. like there's there's very different parts of oklahoma so cool but cool yep we have a real real project it's really out there i'm yeah, really happy to be it. sharing it with people so thank you for everyone who's listened this far <laughs> yeah yeah if you made it to episode uh 11 of our podcast here we're uh, happy you're here. We hope you're enjoying it. If you're not enjoying it and you're still listening this far, seek professional health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can tell. We you. just want you to be happy. <laughs> yeah, really. We want you to be happy and we want you to listen to me ranting about something. This is going to be one of those episodes too. Oh yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of stuff to rant about in episode 10, season one, episode 10, Death Walker. <laughs> So we okay. start this episode mm-hmm. with Kosh and Talia, which is the RB plot. And he's yeah. just like, important business. I've already paid for it. I've already got Psychor to sign off on it all. You know, like super shady. And he's just like, Vague meet me at red three at the hour of scampering. How the are you supposed <laughs> to know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> right. So one of my go-to pod research websites that I keep finding myself on Mm -hmm. is a collection of posts from JMS on Usenet back in forever ago when the show was actually airing. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently someone asked him what the hour of scampering was and he says it's just after tea time. Okay. If I had tea time, I could, I could vouch for that. (laughs) I I think it's supposed to be, that's the joke is it still Uh doesn't actually tell you what time it is. Uh It just kind of puts an hour, like it it, it puts it like, okay. So like after Uh lunch-ish, before lunch, I don't, it's, it's still very ambiguous. (laughs) Yeah. I'm trying to think if that's when I would do my scampering. I'm not a morning scamperer, obviously. So it's gotta be afternoon after a snack. Okay, I, I'll buy off on that. Yeah, yeah, you get a little caffeine, <laughs> do a little scampering. Mm-hmm. Checks out. Yeah, so that whole thing was vague and questionable and weird. Yeah, uh, just like every interaction they have for this whole episode. Yeah, and then... Just like Kosh in this episode. Yeah. This is a very, like, for an episode that Kosh is in for, like, maybe four minutes of screen time, it is a Kosh episode almost. Yeah, it's very um, Kosh heavy if you think about it. After the scene, we cut to Space TSA, where mm-hmm. Natoth is waiting for a certain cruiser to come in. And a Mimbari transport lands. An unknown alien gets off of it. And Natoth just scre- starts screaming, episode title, episode title, and charges <laughs> in and assaults this alien until security pulls them off of her. Yeah, she beats this alien pretty severely. Yes. Like, we are not conscious at the end of this beating. And then we go straight to theme song. (laughs) Yeah, attempted murder to theme song, not actual murder to theme song, was a nice change of pace. Yeah. Yeah. The show's getting a little (laughs) less violent, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. 
So after theme song, Garibaldi and Sinclair are discussing the incident with Natal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and apparently the name Death Walker is not unusual. To, like they've heard of this name before. Yeah. It's unusual that Natoth would be screaming it at someone, but they're familiar with this name. Yeah. And they go to visit Natoth, and she tells them that she's got a family blood oath against the Death Walker. I think she calls this Shankar. Yeah. That whole thing is a little bit vague. I wonder when they talk about it, if this is a literal, because they talk about it using like the senses, like she can smell it. She yeah. She can feel it. She can touch it. I have thoughts on this. Okay. Well, we can, yeah. We can get there. She tells them her grandfather was killed by a medical experiment that she did. He like escaped from yeah. the Dilgar, but she had put something in his brain that wound up killing him eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, they talk about it a bit more. And Sinclair's like, there's no way that this is Death Walker. Like it's 1975. If Hitler were alive, he'd be, just, he'd be so old by now. Right. You know, right. This can't be. That's 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 not space Hitler. <laughs> and Jakar shows up and apologizes for Natoth, which I found, you know, right away I was like, oh, something doesn't smell right here. Yeah. Like Jakar takes these sort of things very seriously, but he is being very ingratiating mm-hmm. about this. And he apologizes for her, arranges for her to have be under house arrest until they figure out what's going on and they scuttle away really quickly. Yeah. And between this conversation and one in a little bit with uh, Jakar and Atoth about it, I do think that this is like the the Narn blood oath. I think it's like a psychic thing almost. Yeah. It seems I, to be something actually tangible. It's not just like yeah. we've, we've been shown a picture of this person and vowed something against this person. Yeah. Yeah. I smelled my grandfather's blood on uh-huh. her hands. Like... That's heavy. It's a lot of five senses talk. And she says it with such conviction. Mm-hmm. You know, it, may, it really makes me think that there's more to this than the family got together around grandpa's deathbed. And it's like, we're going to get this bitch. I am a lawman on a mission from God. It feels like a thing. Yeah. For sure to me. I agree. Which is why, because it's such a thing, it's weird that Jakar wants to just kind of shuffle this to yeah. the side. Uh, something's not right either with Kasha's business deal, which is the next place that we go to. Yeah, it's the hour of scampering, mm-hmm. and uh, Talia meets with Kosh. Uh, we get the understanding is a three-edged sword line. Only part of it, though. We're going to get more oh, of it. We get more of point. it later. This is the first reference of that. Mm-hmm. And I remember like hearing this in other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like This is, like for me, like understanding is a three-edged sword, you know, your truth, their truth, and the reality in between. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure this was like from a thing. Like, this is like, oh, this is a super heavy quote. This is really well stated. No, this is from Babylon 5. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, <Recently. laughs> I've seen this on like inspirational backgrounds and posters uh-huh. and stuff before, you know, and it's like, no, this JMS wrote that shit. It's straight B5. Like, this is, that's where it's from. Recently, I saw somebody wrote a serious like business think piece and threw mm-hmm. this in there about that, and I could not resist. And I'm on my LinkedIn commenting, that's originally from Babylon 5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not serious business, it's sci-fi. Yeah. I want to say that I absolutely hate this B-plot because this B-plot is the only thing I remembered about this episode, this episode from being a child and it's because of this worst goddamn hat i have ever seen um, on Abba, this guy that hat makes you look like a girl am i a pretty girl oh well um you're you're beautiful uh fun fact uh this role was written for gilbert godfrey oh man <laughs> but he had a scheduling conflict and couldn't do the episode <laughs> i can see it now yeah yeah yep Mm-hmm. I don't know if Can I would like it better words? or not. Oh, you're a P5. I'm a side 23. Ah! I, I do <laughs> cannot do a Gilbert Gottfried, but I'm not even um, going to try. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Just in your head, hear it in his voice. I'm, yeah. I'm a rating 23. Yeah, Such I don't. Nice I don't know number. if that makes me feel any better about this character or not. <laughs> I hate. I hate this hat. I hate this character. I hate you it. Should all. well, he's 
he's blank. He's, you know, I mean, that's, we'll get into it, but yeah. <laughs> he's um, not here to be likable for sure. No, he's not. That's not his role. After this, Sinclair goes to MedLab and visits episode title, and Dr. Franklin says that he can't identify their species. And Sinclair's just like, that's a Dilgar. And Franklin's like, the Dilgar are a dead race. You know, the few that survived the war were killed when their son went Nova. That's really dramatic. <laughs> this is some crazy world building right here. Right. And uh, it's just like, is that why, did they know their son was going Nova? Is that why they were out conquering worlds to like let their species survive? And if that's the case, why didn't the collective universe, just that world's uninhabited. It just, it blows my mind that like, this race was driven to such an extreme for this war. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're just all assholes. They're the Nazis, effectively. They're space right. Nazis. Mm -hmm. um, at least in terms of their atrocities and war crimes, as we find out when Sinclair does a computer search and we find out she's straight up destroyed three planets. Like, just that's unlike the little metal lab report. She's destroyed three planets, <laughs> genocided a fourth with a viral weapon. Wow. And, and she's wanted for crimes against all sentience. Yeah, I think that's a nice touch. I really, 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 really appreciated crimes against sentience as opposed to even in Star Trek, we get crimes against humanity. Right. Or, a hu or what is it? Oh, God, it was in Star Trek VI is such a good line where um, they've got the Klingon delegates on board and they're having dinner. And I think McCoy says something like, oh, we're going to have a humanitarian effort for your moon that was destroyed or something. And like Queen Klingon just goes humanitarian effort. Even the word is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Federation. You're that full of shit. Sort of McCoy's like good old country boy thing. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, yeah. Coded. Yeah. 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 Um, Man. So I really appreciated Crimes Against Sentience. Me too. I appreciate the phrase Crimes Against Sentience. Yes, it's, it's a nice build of, of the place. What I think might have been a better build for me for this storyline would have been more episodes than just one. And I want yeah. your, your take on that because, I, and you know, I've obviously it's been 20 years since I watched the show, mm -hmm. but I don't remember much more talk of the Dilgar. They're a dead race, effectively. You know, right. all, all, the only Dilgar we ever see is Deathwalker. Here. But it seems like the actions of their race were a big part of the setup to this world and to, you know, the League of Non-Aligned Worlds being what it is. And yeah, yeah it, it just seems like I wish that this had been a multi-episode thing. I don't know that the League of Non-Allied Worlds exists without the Dilgar War. Right. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, it was the first war that Earth really took part of, too. Mm -hmm. This was 20 years before the Earth-Mimbari War. We get a lot of mention of grandfathers being involved in this because Natoth's grandfather was a victim of Death Walker. Mm -hmm. And then Sinclair mentions his grandfather fought in the Dilgar Wars. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, his family is fighter pilots going back to the Battle right. of Britain. So, right. So um, that tracks... And I mean, that is also like knowing that this is effectively about World War II, mm -hmm. knowing that this episode is all about effectively Nazi scientists defecting after World War II. I mean, that's the allegory that this episode is trying to tell very blatantly. Knowing that it came out in the 90s, people watching this, their parents and grandparents would have fought in World War II. Yeah. Um. And so I think the timing of this now, 20 years later, it feels different. And I obviously I don't, you know, I was nine when this yeah. episode first aired. Yeah. Um, I can't really speak to the zeitgeist at the time, but I do think this episode hits very differently in 1994 than it does 2021. Yeah because of the extra 30 years and also because of neo-fascism yeah <laughs> fucking <laughs> oh, god damn it <sighs> are we gonna go okay. one episode without bringing up neo-fascism god back to the episode so garibaldi shows up 
mm -hmm. into Med Bay. And With he's her got, stuff. Yeah, he's got her stuff because they he was searching the ship to try to figure out who she was. And he's yeah. got a uniform uh, that I believe she was she was wearing Membari war cast clothes when she came on. Yes, I think they said yeah. that. Yeah, she was it was a Membari transport, Membari clothes, Membari ID, mm -hmm. not a Membari. Not a Membari. And the uniform is a Dilgar uniform, he confirms. Yeah, uh, of a <laughs> grand war master or war yeah. Or something. Yeah, like yeah, with her like rank and name and everything. Like mm -hmm. it's this is episode titles uniform. Yeah, no and doubt. he's got a weird vial. And Sinclair, to his credit, says, you know, a uniform doesn't prove it because true. you can you can have somebody's clothes. Like <laughs> yeah. So God bless you, Sinclair, for reminding us of due process, reminding the cop of due process. <laughs> uh yeah he needs and, it. right and this is this is when he talks about that his grandfather observed the war crimes committed by the dilgar and i just mm -hmm. wish you know i feel like and one thing that we'll talk about in the next few episodes i'm sure is the the reboot news that we got in the last couple months that yeah Babylon 5 is being rebooted obviously it feels like the death walker storyline has to be there i would like to see it over multiple episodes i'm hoping that jms feels the same way yeah uh, just... i i don't know how much of the same stuff he's gonna want to do yeah i don't know but if he if he brings it up yeah because it is it does seem foundational to the world he built I yeah would like I, to see i'm expecting an entirely course. different world yeah i'm expecting a lot of differences okay. I'm, i think it's going to be a very different show yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to that um, I do think, I mean, the Dilgar, you know, if you, I think you could do a very interesting story about the Dilgar War. You probably set it farther back in time. Mm, you make okay. that change to make it more contemporary to the current audience. You could do this over a couple episodes and definitely do some interesting things and tell a more thorough story in a couple episodes. Yeah. But Garibaldi, Sinclair, and Franklin all get interrupted by a gold channel transmission from Earth. And then we mm -hmm. cut to jakar and atos yep and they're talking and jakar is like we've got to take episode title back to the home world mm -hmm. natoth is like i'm gonna delay my blood oath so that we can do this i guess and my dad pulled into the drive through and we started cheering and then he ordered one black coffee for himself she's not happy about it yeah she's not happy about it but she's also not giving it up Mm -hmm. And this is where we see real Jakar poke through. And it's just like, you wouldn't be a nard if you were willing to give up a blood oath. Like, mm -hmm. this is foundational to our species. I get it. And not only do I understand and appreciate you not giving up your blood oath until after we do what needs to be done, but I will help you. Mm -hmm. I will join your family's blood oath to make sure that this happens. This is where it was all the very vivid imagery that I was like, oh. This is something physical for them, mm -hmm. something tangible. It's definitely, it's something more than what we would consider to be something of these lines mm -hmm. as, I don't know, maybe non-mafia related. Yeah, there's, I'm sure there's. <laughs> <laughs> I think about making those Star Trek parallels again, like a Klingon blood oath. Like even as serious as the Klingons are shown to take those sort of blood oath things. If you have something to say to me, say it. Now get the hell out of our galaxy. It's still not, I don't mm -hmm. get a physical image yeah. from it. Like it's a physical thing. It's all about the honor. It's all about conceptual things. It's not about there's something physically going on with me. Yeah. So a senator comes on the TV. Senator Hidoshi. And he's demanding that Sinclair turn over the woman. He's using her fake name. Yeah, Jyla Lobos. Jyla mm -hmm. Lobos, whatever it was. Yeah, so um, he's still maintaining a facade of something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it can't be that person. Mm -hmm. Hitler would be too old by now. Yeah, and when Sinclair says, I think this might be Hitler, he, the senator denies it and tells him that this is a, a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure it's Hitler, guys. It's pretty sure it's Space Hitler. <laughs> if, I, if I had to guess, I'd guess it was Space Hitler. <laughs> but I guess I don't need to know. But I'm pretty sure. 
that's a recurring theme in the show i think is that being in the middle of a chain of command and mm -hmm. not being allowed to know things and like the chafing that that causes people yeah when there's secrecy like that and i mean and it's something we see sinclair deal with a lot mm -hmm. and uh in a little bit we see him lean on that structure which is i don't think we've seen that really before mm -hmm. but we'll talk about that when it comes around yeah 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 jitter wakes up and gives franklin shit for snooping and then mm -hmm. demands to see sinclair by name yeah which that struck me too is like she knew where she was going she mm -hmm. knew what was going to happen. She knew who she needed to talk to. Yeah. She's very much in control of her own situation, at least. Mm -hmm. she, she does not feel like she has no control at any point. Yep. And they talk. And she confirms her identity as episode title. They talk about her universal anti-agopic, mm -hmm. which slows aging and prevents disease all in one go. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Sounds like, like something we've been looking for since the beginning of time, right? Yeah, like conceptually on a scientific level, I, I guess it's just like a constant cell rejuvenator where yeah. your um, RNA strands don't die off like they do, which is what causes aging. So yeah. that's cool. But I'm definitely not a scientist. So She also tells Sinclair that she was being sheltered by the wind swords, mm -hmm. which we find out are a Mimbari war cast group. And she taunts him. Well, they've, they're the ones who did the attack. In okay, the see, I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember if it was the wind swords or just another. Yeah, I, had to check. I, didn't, okay. I didn't just remember that. I did, I did have to check. But oh, I'm glad is, you did. Yeah, yeah no, the wind swords <laughs> are the uh, sect who did the attack in the pilot episode. Well, and she taunts him saying, they say you have a hole in your mind, which yeah, from the pilot. Mm -hmm. So that, that all tracks. Uh, yep. Yeah. I found that interesting later, but yeah, she, she basically says I'm immortal because I've done this research and everybody wants it. Yeah. And I'm going to go to earth and everyone in the galaxy will have this by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is at that stage with my level of research right now. Mm -hmm. I, this is ready for manufacture. This is not, this is not some experimental maybe shit. Mm hmm after this, we get Talia frustrated because she can't understand the conversation that's happening around her. And it doesn't make sense for her to be there because this guy's mind is totally empty. I said, empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Yeah, there's nothing there. What's the fucking point? Yep. And Kosh is all like, you need to listen to the music, not the song. And I'm just like, that's really shitty to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on a couple of levels. But also it's just like, listen uh to the music not the song is the wrong way to like listen to the song not the lyrics maybe listen to the music not the instruments maybe like <laughs> i don't know there, i think there's better ways to accomplish what he's trying to say here mm -hmm. uh that's uh, maybe i'm just being a nitpicky asshole fucking kosh yeah so she she asks kosh to clarify why she's doing this and he mm -hmm. refuses and then she asks abit or, it, or I can't yeah a, okay a boot a boot a boot i don't remember exactly she yeah she asks him to clarify and he says it's not good to reflect too much and then she has a painful flashback yeah and she leaves all mm -hmm. very very cryptic yeah it's weird sinclair tracks down lanier since delenn is conveniently off station yeah i wonder what she had going on in her schedule yeah something <laughs> Because she's out, we get to see Lanier deliver an impressive wiki entry. Yeah. Off the top of his and head. Like, oh, this person? Mm -hmm. Episode title? I got that shit. Born this day, genocided these worlds, destroyed these worlds, was a terrible fucking person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very matter-of-factly. Disappeared and definitely was not harbored by the Minbari. Yeah. <laughs> Sinclair's all like, well, what about those wind swords? And Lanier's all like, I don't think so, bro, but... I'll check back with the boss. And it's mm -hmm. all like, I can't contact the council or make any decisions or anything, but I'll reach out to the Len. Who is definitely not on the council. Who is definitely not on the council. And <laughs> yeah, actually, wait a minute. He's not allowed to reach out to the council, but he can reach out to the Len who's on the council. Mm -hmm. Maybe when he was full of shit. Yeah. yeah. 
I didn't even think about that. Man. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Lanier. <laughs> <laughs> Jakar and Shadur talk. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Jakar's just like, whatever is paying you, my government's going to triple it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, we don't care. Because I don't think she's taking Jakar's offer seriously here. He's no, all, she knows who like, the big dog is. Yeah, I think. she's like, I yeah. need one more thing. And Jakar's just like, name it. And it's all like, the toss head on a platter within an hour. And he's just yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Mm. And he, he leaves in a huff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down a, a mini notes rant here. Because yeah. she, the way she phrases it specifically, I wrote down. And she said, the head of the animal that attacked me. And I was Ooh. like, damn. And I, I was reflecting. I said, there's, there's a lot of dehumanization and animalistic imagery in the show. Because Lanier calls Jadur a beast right before this. Mm-hmm. She does have very beast-like features, too. If you think about her, her makeup, she's got like a cat eye. She's got kind of like a cat nose face mm-hmm. thing going on. Yeah. Um, she referred to Natoth as an, a- an animal. And then we leave this scene with her doing like a demonic laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Evil left a commercial. I'll take this point to point out the actress playing Jador here is Sarah Douglas, who was Ursa in the Donner Superman movies, which is like General Zod's lady companion that's oh. super evil and destroys shit all the time. Okay, so she this is a this is a career path for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is like she plays villains. That's what she does. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was I just started reflecting, and I'm not defending the war criminal because that is not yeah. <laughs> we are we are not that podcast. No, um, no, we are not. <laughs> but she makes a point later toward the end that all of the remaining worlds are going to collapse it on themselves and fight over this and destroy themselves Mm -hmm. and i think that all of the dehumanization that happens in this episode is showing the groundwork for yes this is possible Mm -hmm. and i say dehumanization because that's the word we have for this this concept not yeah you know it's obviously they're treating different sentience as you know not sentient right yeah they're referring to each other beast yeah Yes, yes. And so I was like, man, that that's a lot to think on. I I don't have any answers for it. <laughs> yeah. But basically w- with these word choices, I feel like we're showing that yeah, that this is entirely possible. That we have not transcended beyond this. Yeah. After this, we get our first real, I feel like a McLaughlin group, issue one of the yeah. senior staff. I don't yeah. think we've had all of them with Dr. Franklin and Garibald, like everyone sitting down in to a discuss room to the talk episode. about stuff. Yeah, <laughs> to discuss the episode before. Yeah. And um, I, it's a real Star Trek move. It is. And I really wanted to rewrite this scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I felt like, you know, we, we come in and Garibaldi is the one that's writing hard for, you know, yeah. this is wrong. This yeah, is fuck wrong. this justice. <laughs> yeah. And... I really wanted that to be coming from Franklin. That's fair. I mean, Franklin is real. He doesn't throw a lot in this conversation. Yeah. And it's for very, being present for it. yeah, it's very like surface level, like maybe she's changed shrug. And it's like, that is not how a medical doctor would feel about this. Yeah. Or should this woman about this. literally like, I mean, I don't think they talk about it in details in the episode, but like in that little med bay entry, she infected an entire planet with a virus mm-hmm. just to see how long it would take to kill everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck. Yeah. I'm not saying Garibaldi can't feel the way he does, but I feel like that the argument should have been coming from Franklin with Garibaldi singing backup. Like, yeah. I was... Franklin is always like, his position has always been the one of principle. Like, you know, we need to mm-hmm. say, oh, that, a lot of his feelings and emotions come from a desire to save lives. And the greater good. good. He feels very strongly about that, which is our next episode. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We're staring down the barrel of right now. Yeah. I'm sitting there like, well, maybe we didn't have Franklin make these arguments because next episode is coming. Logically, I think that it would have made more sense for him to be speaking up and not be so just like shruggy about, yeah, I think it's a serum that'll really work. Like, Mm -hmm. 
he knows the source and he also has the, you know, do no harm vow. They, they mentioned yeah. that the Hippocratic Oath is still around at some yeah. point in the show. So now, I, I agree. I feel like he should be a lot more vocal proponent of this woman, even despite her work. He acknowledges the possibility. And this is like the fucking founder of the youth guys. Like we need to like not ignore this discovery and I'm pretty sure we're going to need her to get it. But you, there's a but after there that isn't said and it needs to be by Franklin 100%. Yeah. I'm glad you you caught that too. Ivanova is back in the cut for most of this conversation in typically her style. She's sitting there, she's listening, she's nodding. When she has a piece of pertinent information, she interjects. And it's, that's very much her command style. And, you know, there are no right answers here, you know, is her answer. Yeah. And she does not want to make the call necessarily. No, she, she would... doesn't want to make the call. Yeah. And neither does Sinclair. Right. You know, this one's too big for us. Let Earth figure it out. Yeah. I empathize you know, with have, that. Yeah. We have an entire government. They can figure it out. And I think the unsaid thing here is we have elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is something that deserves the voice of the people in a lot of ways mm -hmm. to settle. And I don't expect there to be a popular vote on whether or not we let this person do things. But effectively, by letting an elected body handle it, that's, you know, it's the point of the Republic is to right. be able to make decisions quicker than having everyone vote on something. Yeah. Um, so... There's that. And I I guess I I get that as a leader. Like mm -hmm. and you're trying to honor, you know, your your government and your system, I guess. But man, I am team I'm with Garibaldi on this one hundred percent. Like you can't just ignore this shit. Yeah. Like your inner paladin is screaming. <laughs> oh, so loud. So loud. My inner paladin is furious at this episode. Mm -hmm. Almost as furious as it gets at next episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for being chill, Babylon 5. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just want my sci-fi to be fun. So before episode title leaves, Sinclair confronts her and asks, why Earth? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's an important question to ask. And she says, Earth entered the war and defeated the Dilgar. This is the benefit of their conquest. Mm -hmm. Which struck me as a very, like, that That says so much about Jadur's mindset. It's very you know? Darwinistic. It is. Yeah. You know, the last of her race, she says, even her homeworld is destroyed. The name Dilgar is not spoken except with contempt. But her discovery will prove the Dilgar remembered with honor all of history. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, about okay. that. Yeah. I mean to the credit of her logic because I get refused to give this fictional character any credit as a fucking genocidal maniac <laughs> um, to the credit of Jitter's logic theoretically she'll be she believes she'll be alive for forever to help perpetrate that and make oh. sure that people don't forget that. Yeah, that's true. She's um, assuming she survives all of this, right? Yeah, oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, does, she doesn't understand a situation where she dies, I think. Mm -hmm. Such is her ego. Such has to be the ego of someone who fucking destroys planets. Right. So Garibaldi shows up <sighs> and they try to take her away. But mm -hmm. we saw a little cutscene in between where Jakar said that his agent had heard that they were going to transfer off the station. And yeah. part of me wondered, I was like, is Jakar's agent Garibaldi? Did he leak this so it wouldn't, so Ooh. she wouldn't be able to go? I mean, that's a fun little- Ooh, I like in. that. One big damn conspiracy and everyone's in on it. So the League of Non-Aligned Worlds shows up in the hallway to demand their justice. Yeah, as they should. This was funny because I was, I was watching and making notes on this and my husband walks in and he goes, who's watching Jaws? Because he hear, heard the music in the background and it's mm -hmm. very done it, done it. I wouldn't have caught that if he hadn't literally thought I was watching Jaws. That's fun. We get a little bit here. There's a, like a very throwaway line from episode title. So uh -huh. I don't I don't think we talked about it earlier, but when uh, Jadur first meets Sinclair, 
there's a little bit of like oh you know the ways of leadership when he like dismisses someone out of the room uh -huh. the way of command yeah you know the way yeah. of command yeah it's like but you're too sentimental right uh -huh. she throws in there it's like you have too much connection with individuals and people to be able to be a truly effective leader like uh -huh. a military leader and uh -huh. in this scene when he is like fine we'll have the council meeting because I'm not going to kill you all, which is the deal that you just proposed. Like, mm -hmm. either we're not getting out of the way, so you're going to have to fucking shoot every single ambassador for the League of Not Aligned Worlds to take her off the station. It's the only way it's happening. And he's all like, fine, we'll have the meeting. And she's just, like, too sentimental. And it's just, like, <gasps> in the background, it's real quiet, but it's 100% there. And you're just like, oh, because she knows if she were the leader, she would have just killed 30 ambassadors without thinking about it. Uh-huh. Because, I mean, it's immortality. Well, we already know what she thinks of their worlds. Like, it's true. So, yeah. yeah. She doesn't think they're people. No. No, she doesn't. So we cut from, from this agreement to the assembly back to Talia and Kosh. Mm -hmm. And Talia wants to back out of these negotiations. But again, Kosh cryptically refuses. And then the dumbass and his hat are back. And he mm -hmm. kisses her hand and brings on more unpleasant images. She has more flashbacks that are yep. some terrible ass visions of some variety. <laughs> yeah. So then we cut to the assembly and Sinclair and Garibaldi are discussing and Sinclair is sure that the Mimbari will side with justice and with having this trial. And I want yep. to ask why the fuck is he so sure? Because <laughs> there is no, he says, he says, I wrote this down. There's no reason for them not to, and they're honorable. And I was like, A, there is a reason for them not to. Yes. And B, how, why are you so, he keeps telling us they're honorable, but we keep seeing directly related to Sinclair yeah. issues of, that are not this honorable facade, you know, mm -hmm. the, the reason not to be yeah. to side with justice in the trial is that she was, she came in a Mimbari ship. We right? know that she said she said the wind sword sheltered her. Yeah. The even if the Mambari don't condone the actions of the wind swords, a trial is going to bring out that information. And for sure. So to me, there's no incentive for them to vote for a trial. Because that's not going to look good. Mm -hmm. And then we know, you know, you've tied the wind swords back to the pilot already. So she alluded to that she knows about all of that. Because she mm -hmm. said that there's a hole in your mind. So why are you really so sure about honor and trust with the Mimbari? She, sh Sinclair. Yeah, she shouldn't be. Yeah, it's, it it's misplaced trust in Delenn is what yeah. this is. My favorite bit of this whole episode is right here. So earlier in the episode, Londo's all like, Oh, yeah. Heard you've got episode title? What the shit's up with that? I thought Space Hitler would be too old to be dead by now. Uh -huh. And Sinclair's just all like, oh, rumors, space Hitler's here, come on. Yeah. And so Lando's all like, so I thought it was just a rumor. <laughs> and Sinclair goes, yeah, we were trying to keep things quiet. Uh -huh. And he just goes, great job. I know, I, I had a party laugh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Lando with a straight fire, just like, you fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you oh. know, Peter Jurisic was having fun. Yeah, yeah. You just <laughs> love that. You don't get a lot to do in this episode, Lando. But mm -hmm. when that's what you get to do, he shows you show up. up for work. Yeah. yeah. So at the council meeting starts, and Kalika speaks, um, saying Jadur deserves a uh, trial. You know, it will take it's place on B5. The League of Online Worlds is unanimous in this. Mm -hmm. We've decided. And then Londo is the next council member to speak. She's terrible, but she wasn't terrible to me. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Votes no. Very sorry. Uh, Jakar's all like, well, yeah, of course you vote no, because the Centauri are implicit in all of the Dilgar's war crimes. All of them? Oh my gosh, he was politicking so hard here. Right. <laughs> and, you know, they're never known for their flair for justice. So, yeah. of course we vote yes. If. So... If, <laughs> if the trial's held on Nar, mm -hmm. because, you know, we don't trust anyone with her. Mm -hmm. They're just like, that's outrageous. We know you were with the Dilgar. Fuck off. And then he's like, well, then we vote no. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and 
we were really, I'm really making a point of earning our explicit content filter warning. Yeah. <laughs> that we just I put, on put there it today. in for every episode and everything so it's just like you know what i know how many times i click that box getting our pod on different catchers i'm earning it yeah <laughs> f-bombs for everyone right <laughs> uh kosh abstains and clear votes yes and lanier comes up standing in for delenn the Mumbai were not involved in this conflict vote no hail between his legs right mm-hmm and with no trial, the League withdraws from the Assembly. Like, not even like, oh, this meeting's over. Stand it's, up and walk out. We're done talking to your species. This is over. I just want to say that giving the League of Non-Aligned Worlds one vote collectively seems like a huge Shitty. injustice. <laughs> I know why. Mm-hmm. And it's not the League of Non-Aligned Worlds is so small that they get one vote or anything like that, right? Mm-hmm. It's purely a plot device to allow these other worlds to exist without having to give them a ton of time yeah and it also more accurately reflects how the un actually works because most un votes aren't us general body votes they're council votes Mm -hmm. so like the un security council which is like 11 countries or whatever and there's like five or six permanent members, like Russia is always a member, U.S. is always a member, China, the, the countries you would expect mm-hmm. that are always a member. And then like other countries get a chance to do it for a year or two. It rotates, there's terms. I don't know a ton of the details, but it allows that kind of a structure where different planets that are involved in that specific plot can kind of show up without having to like explain this rotation and this council and all this stuff yeah it's really just a time-saving device for convenience and making the plot more cohesive Mm -hmm. so i understand it from there but i do agree it's like shitty yeah (laughs) it's shitty for the league of (laughs) non-aligned worlds either alliances or you can do population-based voting like there's a handful of ways to kind of break it up to make it more fair because we don't know the populations or the scope of any nope. of these civilizations. It's mm-hmm. entirely possible that Mimbari space is four times the size of all of the non league worlds put together. It's possible, yeah. So it might be if you were to do it by territory, well, one, you're encouraging war for political power. Um, you know, if you do it by population or something, that they would, they're all so small in comparison that mm-hmm. they'd get no vote. Yeah. And one of the things I kind of like about this show is it very much feels like Earth belongs in the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. Like, as far as, like, our presence in space and as, like, a part of galactic civilization and stuff. But we're not because we paid for the space station. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, when you look at, like, technology compared to others, I see that. Yeah, they're they're definitely, like, I mean, Earth is better off than most of the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. It seems from a technological advancement standpoint, from a societal, from a resources, from a population, it seems like, but we also just don't get a lot of time with many of them. So it's hard to say definitively. It feels like Earth is definitely, I mean, maybe closest to Narn in terms of political power and stuff. Right. But it also kind of feels like Narn almost should be in the League of Online Worlds, but aren't just because it's, it almost feels like it's an Israel and the UN thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Like when the UN was getting going and it's like he, Israel is this new state that we're creating because of what's happened, you know, and I'm not going to speak to my personal feelings on the state of Israel or any of that stuff right now. It's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to make a comparison to yeah. understand. Yeah. Um, like a proximity thing. Yeah. Like versus... they're given power because we're trying to rectify a terrible thing that has happened to them. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I feel almost. Yeah, because they definitely allude to, like, you know, the terrible injustices that happened between the Centauri and the Narn and, like, getting the the Narn yeah. back on a more equitable footing. Sure, sure. So I wonder if that's why Narn is a seat on the council. It also might be that they had good dealings with Earth and mm-hmm. Earth set up this party. So yeah, that's a ton of conjecture. Yeah, but Linear does confirm that the Wind Swords were involved. Mm-hmm. And now the Mimbari are exactly, like I said, too embarrassed to, for this to come to light. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't know why you thought that, Sinclair. There's a bit about this, too. And I don't know if I just read it on a wiki 
or if it was something JMS said on Usenet or something. I don't know how this entered my brain meets or my notes, but when Deathwalker was with the Wind Swords, it was during the Earth Mimbari War, and she was actively making biogenic weapons to kill humans that the Mimbari were refusing to use. Oh, man, that does seem like totally plausible, doesn't it? Yeah. I think yeah. Lanier might say that the Wind Swords brought like weird weapons oh, to the council yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. I think he does. And I, may, maybe that's what JMS was clarifying. But yeah, that's totally a thing that was going on was like she was planning the extinction of the human race from her safety of her Mimbari friends that she was with. Yeah. So ultimately, when she ran for ground and she went with the Mimbari, she kind of picked the wrong horse because they weren't going to use her discoveries. Yeah. And so now she's trying to flip to somebody who might, it sounds like, yeah. you know, if you think about it. And I mean, it, in an interesting hypothetical argument, knowing how terrible Earth government is for most of human history, let alone the series, would, if she had made a play to hide out on Earth, if Earth hadn't entered the Dilgar, well, if Earth hadn't entered the Dilgar War, they probably wouldn't have lost. But the situation where she ends up on Earth helping humans against the Mimbari in the Earth Mimbari War. Mm hmm. And given how desperate things got for Earth in that war. Oh, yeah. Would, would we have played the same? Mm. Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think humanity would have. I think I, humanity I think the, would have taken some of those weapons. Yeah, the implication is certainly there that yeah. we're not as advanced. But we cut to CNC, and mm -hmm. Ivanov and the team are confronted by a drowsy warship coming out of the gate. Um, and then I just want to point out that John Ralphio is back at CNC. So... John Ralphio. You got him right here. Leave a message after the beat. Why do I want you as my assistant? For starters, access to the Illus Club. And that's just for starters. I will work for you. Yeah. He's down in the pit. Woo! <laughs> 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 but the drowsy warship's not alone for long because we get more ships coming through the gate. And yeah, we get some holy... UFOs. I love. Yeah. I love the UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good touch. <laughs> Yeah, and Ivanova gets them to argue amongst themselves for who gets to attack the station. To yeah. Walker. It's so good. She's told stall, and that's what she comes up with. Right? It's so good. It's all like, well, I can't, uh, I have to give them to the Drazi, <laughs> you know? And it's, you got to talk to the Drazi and figure this out. <laughs> so good. <laughs> really good. Mm hmm. Sinclair meets with Kalika and gets the League to agree to a closed meeting. Yep. And Abbott and Kosh spend more time talking nonsense, and they get Talia to really freak out. Yeah. They, they, Kosh asks her a question, and then mm -hmm. she flashes back into the painful memories again and actually screams in public. Mm -hmm. That seems to be it for the talks. And the, yep. the guy takes off his ugly hat, and we get to see his ugly brain. <laughs> Which, why? That's brain, you don't want a brain exposed to oxygen. That's bad for them. For real, that doesn't seem healthy. It's not. <laughs> Takes a data crystal out of his head and gives it to Kosh and is all like, I'm going to go get a Jovian sunspot. Bye. <laughs> and Tali's just like, what the fuck, bro? To yeah. Kosh, it's just like, you need to explain this now. And he's just like, reflection surprise terror for the future yeah which is not explaining it no no rude so rude so sinclair decides to discuss the anti-agapic with the league ambassadors and they are all suddenly all ears they agree that this is important and so sinclair has a proposal for them and he suggests that the League send some representatives to work with Shadur and that they can have the anti-agapic when it's done. And they're okay with this. Yeah, they agree. I... And they call <laughs> off their ships. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, it seems like there should be some sort of objection in this room as well. Yeah, you know? and there's not. Just like we said that, you know, Franklin should probably have some sort of objection and he doesn't. This room should also have some sort of conversation that they don't have. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Honestly, this is the part where the episode falls apart for me. Uh, this is the league just being all like, okay, cool. You know, Im immortality. Yeah, that's worth it. And again, I think this is the limitations of one episode again. Mm -hmm. 
and this is why I keep saying I want multi-episode. If this if this sort of thing comes up in the reboot, mm-hmm. this, this needs to be multi-episode because we need to have these conversations that we just kind of gloss over in this one. Yeah. But Sinclair and Garibaldi go to pick her up mm-hmm. to do her. And she cackles. And she's triumphant. Yeah. She's won. Yeah. So this is what she wanted. And she she says that the worlds will destroy themselves because the key ingredient in her serum requires the death of someone else. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to be immortal, I have to kill Jafar. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, So specific. But... <laughs> well, you're right here. <laughs> I'm very far away. <laughs> well, true. <laughs> Watch out. Just oh, to, no. <laughs> you know, what? How, how many hours is it up there? 20? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the world they're going to tear themselves apart with this because mm-hmm. they're going to they're all going to become her yeah and the billions who live forever will be a monument to her work and the billions who die to grant that immortality will be the continuance of her work yeah everyone will become as villainous as the dilgar when presented with the choice yeah she reveals her big master villain plot and she says another line in there that i really like because in about 5 minutes it also applies, even though it's unsaid. And she says, the superior controls the inferior. Mm-hmm. And uh, we can we can talk through the last five minutes here, and then I'll say why I think that was cool. But yeah, well, I mean, it definitely ties it's, into the it's conversation like five at minutes. the very end of the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of the episode minutes. is very quick. She leaves. The ship is starting to head to the jump gate. Every, a crowd is watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's gathered to see her off. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm guess you know space Hitler leaving's probably an occasion. It's a historic thing. I get it. I guess. And the jump gate opens, and a Vorlon ship pops out and just blows the fuck up out of that shuttle. Yep. Just nope. And Kosh is just like, you are not ready for immortality. The superior controls the inferior. Yep. <laughs> and then Sinclair and Garibaldi uh, wax poetic on the nature of the universe. As Talia approaches, saying that, you know, she's got this issue with Kosh. <laughs> Who uh, doesn't? She, she details her experiences, noting that the flashbacks she were having were of a serial killer she scanned four years ago. Mm-hmm. And then we learned Abbott is a vicar, which is short for VCR. My VHS home video recorder is taping it right now. Like that name's going to survive into the future. That's the most unbelievable thing in this episode. I don't think there's someone in Gen Z who knows what a VCR is, except right. for a couple enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. Um, Kosh recorded her terrors as future insurance against Talia. We just gloss over that Kosh assaulted the resident telepath to get reflections of her PTSD to maybe be able to use against her later. Mm-hmm. After killing Space Hitler. We just kind of shrug. Which, I'm, I mean, I'm fine <laughs> with them killing Space Hitler. Right. I would rather there be a trial and... You know, but, you know, she knows her crimes. I mean, it's not really like a, I, I know, I'm not, I'm big on due process, but. Uh, uh, the you know, episode is showing us that it was not going that way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, it's just like consequences for Kosh? None. Yeah. Shrug. Oh, they're the Vorlons. We couldn't do anything about it anyways. And Talia goes back to her room to drink and cry, I guess. Ugh. It's so horrible. Yeah. I hated this ending. Hopefully hang out with Ivanova. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to drink and cry on Babylon 5. There's one person to do it with. I feel like that's definitely true. Yeah. She's, she's going to be able to do both. <laughs> and scene. That's, that's the it. episode. Yeah. Oh, this episode's heavy. Dear viewer or Laura, <laughs> if, if you feel that there is a choice to be made here, I don't mean to belittle your feelings. I don't mean to take some kind of moral high ground when I say justice needed to be served above all else here. The feelings that I have, which are there is no moral conundrum here, this is Space Mm -hmm. Hitler, are mine. And I don't mean to invalidate your feelings on it if you feel that this is a tougher decision than I present it to be personally because it is not a tough decision for me. Mm. Just to say that out loud, I recognize that not everyone is paladin. Yeah. Not ever not everyone is feels the way I do about certain things. So No, I definitely 
I definitely am on train paladin. Like, yeah, I just, man, <sighs> it's atrocities. You can't, yeah, you can't use. If it was just a general of a war that was mm -hmm. like an unjustified war and there wasn't all the fucking genocide, maybe you could make an argument to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Like, so, you know, if it's, but Jen, uh, I just, I can't abide genocide at all. <laughs> Weird. From anyone, ever. <laughs> I, I, and they definitely <laughs> imply that the other Dilgar who survived got their Nuremberg trials. Yes. So no, there's, why, there's definitely, tr it's definitely true. No matter what this one person has, possesses that you want. You are mm -hmm. not exempt from giving this person their Nuremberg trials. Like, For sure. That's yeah, there needs to not be, how it goes. There needs to be justice. And I mean, I guess their answer is, well, we'll get immortality and justice, guys. We'll just do it both. I said to you <clears throat> earlier this week, I was like, I'm slowly crawling back on top of my pile of shit. Mm -hmm. It would make me happy to talk about some Babylon 5 forgetting that this was our episode this is the episode <laughs> and then the next one yeah which yeah let's, a couple of downers yeah let's introduce the episode here next week season one episode 11 believers dr franklin tries to save the life of a dying alien child when his parents refuse a life-saving operation that conflicts with their religious beliefs yeah we never talked about a like game we play at the end of the episode or a skip option <laughs> if you want to introduce one right now and skip next episode i don't know if it's if it's the current situation mm, the current unpleasantness <laughs> the current unpleasantness in our world the fact that uh religion is being used as an excuse to allow people to die in our country right now yeah selfishly Maybe that's why I don't want to talk about next episode. Yeah. I mean. I remember it. I mean, I watched it as part of my rewatch months mm -hmm. ago. Like, I've, I've seen it in within the last six months, a year now, because I started my rewatch in November of last yeah. year. So, <laughs> I so remember been... Dr. Franklin. Yeah. I remember the, the adorable child. Mm -hmm. I remember the outcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh. a, it's a heavy episode. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there are things to talk about with regards to respecting religious beliefs in there. And I feel differently about those religious beliefs compared to not being vaccinated, being mm -hmm. a religious belief somehow. Yeah. I don't need to get into that right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like everyone listening has heard me go off on enough shit where if they don't know for certain how I feel about it, you probably got a good fucking guess. <laughs> um. I don't know. Yeah. We can do the next episode for the I, sake of completionist. I, if you want to do the next episode, we'll do the next episode. Well, so I'm thinking we do the next episode. Okay. But I wanted to propose to you an idea. And how many episodes are in the season? We've got 20 something. Yes. Yeah. I think 26. I think it's a standard American. Oh, it's 26. Okay. We're so. not quite halfway then. I thought maybe yeah. at the halfway point we could do a lighthearted bonus episode type situation oh yeah we talked about this when we first started yeah. figuring out the podcast there are 22 episodes we are at the halfway point. well that's perfect then right so we do this one and okay. then we go on some bonus territory and clear the clear the mind that sounds nice <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. We'll watch some other stuff. We'll watch some non-Babylon 5 things from Babylon 5 actors. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we were talking about originally. Yeah. That sounds fun. And we'll do little fun reviews there. We'll do a bonus episode or two. Yeah. Cleanse the palate. <laughs> and then get back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds okay. like a plan. All right. Well, thank you to Jeremy Siegel for our yes, thank you, Jeremy. theme music. We love it. Uh, thank you to Angry Duck Time Machine on Instagram for our portraits that are now in our real live podcast art. And have been the whole time. We just, yeah. you know, we recorded them months ago. It's fine. It's all fine. 
what else oh we have a we have an email if you want to talk to us oh yeah we got an email now you can email us at who are you b5 at gmail.com yeah and if you feel like sending in episode corrections or telling me to calm the fuck down politically i can tell you to fuck off twice (laughs) (laughs) i'm kidding feel free to email us and laura and i will get back to you probably i don't expect so many emails that we can't and you know we'd love to hear from you about your thoughts on b5 if you have stories about growing up with babylon 5 as well we'd love to hear them uh because we do genuinely love this show and it is genuinely an important part of our history and our childhood Mm -hmm. and that has to be the case for other people in our age group and we'd love to hear from you about that truly and if you have a cool story and you want to share it with the world we can talk about it on pod or whatever's going on and we have a facebook but at, we have a facebook at page this moment in the history i don't quite blank. know how to use it yet but it. <laughs> hopefully by the time you get this there will be something there <laughs> i'm hoping that i figure out how to automate rss feeds to facebook posts by the middle of january if not it's never happening <laughs> unless dear listener <laughs> you can help us with that in which case please please email us and i will not say man, bad things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's who are you b5 at gmail.com if you know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week, Internet. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs>